In the standard controls, we do have few controls which will form a list. So let's see what all those controls are. Like here, you can see first is the bulleted list. Like we use the unordered or ordered list in the HTML. So we can go for this bulleted list as a unordered list in HTML. You can add or manipulate or remove the content at the runtime. Checkbox list is something when you require multiple checkboxes on your web page and basically when we are getting the data somewhere from a data source like database. Similarly, drop down list will give you a concept of choosing means it will enable user to choose a single value out of a given list and it can just click and just choose the element and that is what a drop down list means. But if I want to show multiple elements of a list at the same time and along with that I may want that user may choose multiple values out of them then I can go for a list box. And similarly like checkbox list we do have a radio button list for the purpose if I want multiple radio buttons on a web page which is basically coming from a data source. So let's see a basic implementation of all these list controls together. So now let's get started with the drop down list and here from the toolbox I will choose the drop down list first and if I want I can put the elements inside this drop down list at the designing time or as well as in the execution time. So for putting the values at the designing time I can simply come to the edit items and here I can just go for the add I'll put the text like let's say item 1 and the value if you want to submit some different value for this particular element in the database you can just give a different value and let's add few uh, elements out there like item 1 item 2 alright so this is how you can add as many as elements you want and then when I will execute I can show those elements in the drop down list so let's execute and see Alright, so here you can see there are three elements available in the drop down list. But if I want to add the such elements during the execution time, I can do that as well as in page load, I will first put the not is post back so that it will be added only at the first page load during the get request of this particular page. And then inside I will put the drop down list one dot items dot add. Inside which you can either pass a list item kind of value or the string. If you'll pass the string, the selected item and selected value both will remain same. As you would have noticed, when I entered the elements, I put text item 1 and the value 1. But if you'll put the string, the value will remain exactly same as of the text. But if you want to give a different things, then I'll have to go for the list item. So for that, what can I do is list item item is equal to new list item and inside this I can pass string text and string value let's say item 4 and in the second element I pa parameter I can pass the string value and then later I can add this item in the drop down list so this is how you can put the elements at the runtime itself while putting the string is quite straightforward you can just pass any particular string like this. Alright, so now when I'll execute this, you will find five elements out there, out of which three were added during desi designing time and item four and item five added at the runtime. Similarly, if at the runtime you want to delete any element from the drop down list, we do have a method for that. And you can observe like whichever list I'll be covering uh, even after this drop down list, the way to add, remove or select the element is going to be similar. So drop down list dot items dot remove. So here you have a couple of choices like either you can go for the remove or remove add. In remove add, you will have to pass the index of the particular item. The index will start from the zero. So I have five elements. So it will start from zero till four. So remove add. If I'll say zero, that means the first element is getting removed. Similarly, drop down list one dot items dot remove. 
here I'll have to pass either a list item or the string element. So here if I'll pass item which is already defined before that so it, that will be removed. So let's execute and see. So here you can see I, item 2, 3, 4 was removed and item 1 was removed from the index that is remove at. So this is how you can remove the element at the runtime. Like the text box we have covered earlier, you can also enable the auto postback for this particular control. Like here, I can either come here as well like auto postback and let's make it true. And as soon as you will select any element, the this particular event will be called because it will be posting this page back. And then later, let's add one more control that is a label control where I'll show the selected value. So there is a label. Let's remove the default text from it and let's come back to this particular method. And here, what I'll do is label one dot text is equal to drop down list one dot text. Either we can go for text or we can also go for the selected item, but we'll continue for the text. Then I will concatenate a separator and then I also want to see the value. So for that I will come for the selected value which is of string type. So let's execute this one now. So item 3. Though we will go for the selected item property it's of object type so if you want you can also typecast it but since we are doing the concatenation it will be converted to the string automatically so let's execute this now again and here you can see item 3 3 item 2 that is the element and then the value 2 for item 5 both are going to be same because we didn't specify any specific value for the item 5. It is added as a string only. So this is how you can uh, add the elements in the drop down list. Along with that you can uh, remove the elements or you can read the selected element from it. Very similarly let's go for the another control that is the list box but before that let's remove the elements from here. Alright. So let's come here and see the implementation of a list box. Here again the things are going to be same like if I want to add the elements at the runtime. So list box one dot items dot add and again you can observe both things are common like either go for list item or string item. So for uh, this one I will just go for the string value but preferably we should keep the different values for the text and the value. So here I have added uh, four values and let's uh, resize this list box. All the methods for adding, removing or selecting will remain same. But the only difference which you will find here is first is it will show the multiple records at a time. Apart from that you can also choose multiple values from this. You can all only choose one value from the drop down list but if it is about the uh, list box you can go for the selection mode property and here you can go for multiple. So let's execute this. By default here also you can choose only a single value like this one, this one. If I'm choosing another one first one will be unselected. But if you want to choose multiple value you will have to press control key from the keyboard and then you can select multiple elements like this. Alright. Again, as I said, by default, only one element will be selected if you will not hold the control key. Similarly, we do have the option for the checkbox list and radio button list. You can similarly add the values in the very same format. All right, like let's say about the checkbox list. So here, I will add few elements at the comp designing time itself. Let's come to edit items. Alright, and as soon as you will select any element from this, here I will take a variable string select and inside this I will just concatenate for all the values which are being selected. Now inside this particular function, we will write the particular code like for loop is here. So I will start it from zero and I will execute till the number of elements are present inside that checkbox list. 
now inside this i will check each and every checkbox of the checkbox list and if that one is selected means if it is checked then i will take the text of that particular one and will concatenate in this string variable and then we'll separate that with a semicolon and later i just printed the value of that select variable in the label so let's execute this one and see the output so here inside you can see like as soon as I'll click on checkbox 3, checkbox 4, checkbox 1. So you can see all the selected ones are getting added in this label. Similarly I will add few elements also in the radio button list. Similarly I will add few elements in the radio button list. So for that again I'll come to the items, we'll add few items here. Alright and then I will do the similar type of code for this one. For that first take a radio button list and then inside I have done a similar kind of code like selected is a variable where I'll put the selected text and then you select the same code you will find which I have done for checkbox the same code is for radio button list as well. Just the thing is we will only be able to select the one value in the radio button list so just uh, one value will be here in the selected. I am not concatenating everything. And uh, I've just put the value in the same label, but I can also take another one. So this is the label two, which I have just taken. And here I will say label two dot text. So let's execute this again. So it's item two, item three, item one, item four, whatever I'm choosing, it's getting displayed here. This is how you can start working with these list controls. Similarly, you can also work with the bulleted list. The way to add the elements in the bulleted list will remain same and that will be for the display purpose only. So you can try that by using the similar functions which we have done here.